We're intrigued by the challenges posed by electric motorcycles. I'm an engineer as well as a racer and I've, I'm very attracted to the idea of overcoming these technical challenges to make a green bike that's, that's still legitimately fast and exciting. We've got some really talented engineers that we've pulled in from the unmanned helicopter industry. My day job is in aerospace engineering, develop unmanned vehicles. We've designed some really neat unmanned vehicles, for instance, set the world record for helicopter endurance. So I'm used to working in things that are high power, lightweight, uh, involve a lot of control systems. I've also worked a little bit in the automotive industry, developing hybrid cars, both in the supercar application, but with a vision toward heavy vehicles where saving fuel makes a big environmental and economic impact. I've done all sorts of projects in the aerospace industry. Uh, my primary background is in electrical engineering and software to some extent, so I've, I've had a variety of experience in software and electronics including wireless technologies, GPS, um, uh, power systems, all, a whole varieties of electronics. I'm also an engineer and, and I'm the rider so that helps a little bit too in that I can test ride and then come back and talk directly to the engineers about improvements that we need to make. Yeah, the, there's some formidable funding challenges in front of us uh, because we're on the cutting edge of technology. Um, we've got a number of partners like Olean's USA, uh, Yo-Yo Dyne, Swift Engineering. Swift Engineering has been uh, around building race cars since about uh, the early 80s and uh, we moved into this facility in the early 90s and up until about the year 2000 we were primarily a race car manufacturer. Since then we've diversified into aerospace, unmanned aerial vehicles and uh, manufacturing of components, uh, high quality composite components mainly for uh, other people. Swift is providing us uh, carbon fiber composite fabrication. They're providing us with a wind tunnel. Chip and his crew, he's got some very talented engineers working on it, but we feel there are certain things at Swift that we can bring to the party to aid him in his project. Our whole approach to designing this bike is probably different from other teams. We have data, real data from the tracks that we're going to compete on. And we are developing the bike to deliver the same lap times as the data that we've collected from those tracks. To use real lap data, uh, real driving data to educate our design and make improvements. So we've already got data from some of Chip's past races. This is from Laguna Seca last year. It shows breakdown of, of different power, how much is being used in braking, how much is being used uh, to go up hills, that kind of thing. And that lets us size all our components, make sure we have enough battery juice at the end of the race, make sure we have the right motor make sure we can uh, at least match, if not beat, uh, last year's performance. But then as we continue to race, we're going to collect this kind of data, improve our algorithms, uh, improve our components. 2010 is, is really the pioneering year for electric superbike racing. And there's three significant championships around the world. There's, in America, there has been an announcement of four races, the first of which is Infineon in May. We will certainly be participating in that. I got to race there during the AMA on my internal combustion motorcycle, and we have data from that track. The second championship is the ACU, which is the British National Championship. They've also announced four rounds, and there's an additional round, the Isle of Man TT, making five rounds in the United Kingdom. Finally, the FIM, the world sanctioning body for motorcycle racing and motorsports, has announced a four-round championship in Europe and those rounds are going to be in exotic places like Le Mans and Qatar. One of the places that our technologies could make it into the market first isn't in an all-electric vehicle but in a hybrid vehicle. Uh, hybrid vehicles require high power systems um, and that's something that the racing application uh, pushes the frontiers of. We have people on the team to help us file patents so our investors uh, will be able to realize financial returns from the development and, and inventions that we're making. But at the same time, we're not afraid to use solutions that are well proven. So we, we don't want to reinvent things that have already been invented, but we, uh, we are a team of people who are capable of inventing 
in the process of solving these challenges. Logistics plays a huge part in any race team budget, and there are 13 races around the world in 2010, um, as far away as Doha, Qatar. So we see each bike, um, you know, between $75 and $100,000. Um, so we'll need to field two bikes with spare batteries and a crew, and then logistics to move around to 13 rounds around the world. Uh, green technology in general is getting a lot of exposure. We, uh, we looked at this carefully and once we had our team together and we thought we could do a good job, we announced a press release uh, several weeks ago and it was instantly picked up worldwide. Um, the, the Isle of Man TT trial race that was done last year received tremendous exposure in the worldwide press and um, so we think for ourselves we've seen exposure that greatly outstripped the exposure that we got last year racing in the AMA and even in World Supersport. So this is a great opportunity for our sponsors and partners to come on and you know have your logo and name affiliated with a green racing team, but, but a team that is delivering very competitive lap times. And our strategy is to win races on the short circuits. And so this is gonna be just tremendous exposure and a lot of excitement. In, in really what amounts to a pioneering year in electric racing.